Welcome to the Counselor Soapbox video channel, Learning About Alcohol Series, Part 9, The Disease Concept of Alcoholism. When does alcohol become a problem, and why is it some people find that when they try to quit or control their drinking, they are, have such a difficult time doing so? Is alcoholism a disease? Sometimes it fits that, and sometimes it doesn't. The disease model requires three things. A host, the person, an agent, normally a bacteria or virus, but in the case of alcoholism, alcohol, and an environment where they come together. Presumably, if a person never consumed alcohol, they could not go on to develop the disease of alcoholism. There are some implications to the disease model. It suggests that alcoholism is treatable as opposed to simply a choice, that people do not choose to be sick. It implies control of symptoms rather than a cure. Many of the diseases that medical doctors and therapists treat today are chronic rather than acute diseases. Alcoholism is defined as a chronic, possibly fatal, recurring condition, which requires ongoing treatment to keep it in check. There have been criticisms of the disease model. Alcoholics and addicts are very diverse people. There's no one addictive personality type. And it raises the question, is alcoholism really a disease? or is it a symptom of some other mental disorder? Some people believe that alcoholism is a lack of willpower, or more precisely, won't power, the ability to decline something that seems good right now, which may have future negative consequences. Other people include alcoholism and addiction as moral failing or an illegal activity. <laughs> One criticism of the disease model is the idea that alcoholics choose to drink. However, as we see in the case of behavioral addictions, people can be, become addicted to uh, almost everything, or is it really just a habit? Recent research, you may want to look at the uh, YouTube videos on Delta Foss B, show that it is possible because of accumulations of chemicals in the brain for the brain to undergo fundamental changes. To the right, you see a set of brain scans which show that people with various uh, addictions or also physical characteristics may have differences in their brain scans. Jelinek developed a model of the progression of the disease of alcoholism. It begins with the stage of the pre-alcoholic who is socially motivated to drink. Then it moves to a prodomal or early warning stage. This often includes blackouts. The crucial stage involves loss of control. Life becomes alcohol-centered. Relationships, family and friendship deteriorate. There may be alcohol-related hospitalization, morning drinking, efforts to get the life back under control, loss of family and friends, and ultimately hospitalization and medical issues. In Jelinek's model of the progression of diseases comes the chronic phase, which includes things like benders, multiple days of drinking, drinking with lesser companions, living on the fringe of society, being unable to hold a job, and drinking other possible poisonous alcohol substitutes. All Jelinek's research has informed a lot of our understanding of alcoholism. There have been some criticisms. His study was conducted with chronic or low bottom alcoholics, those people who had lost the ability to work or had friends. According to his research, blackouts began at the very beginning of the chart of descent into alcoholism. 
The research only included voluntary participants and only included AA members who had developed serious alcohol use disorders. And it was conducted by a self-reports, not observable symptoms. We find now that many people develop symptoms long before they reach this stage of being a serious alcoholic. A lot of time and effort has been spent trying to develop a profile of the addictive personality. Some people will self-describe themselves as having an addictive personality, meaning that whatever they do, they do to excess. What we have defined as an addictive personality when it comes to alcoholism may actually be the result of alcoholism, not the disease. There's always been the nature versus nurture debate. It seems that with alcoholism, there are two risk factors and both matter. Family history, which contributes both genetics and environment, uh, both living with alcoholic family members or growing up around them, but also having the genes of increased susceptibility to alcoholism, both are risk factors. Further, living in a culture with a high rate of alcoholism uh, increases the risk. Uh, and we'll talk more about these factors in future videos. The National Council on Alcoholism criteria defines alcoholism as a chronic disease, a progressive disease, incurable but treatable, and it is often relapsing and untreated can be fatal. Many counselors or therapists were trained using the DSM-4 criteria for alcohol use disorders. Much of the literature currently available uses this terminology. In this system, we looked at five possible diagnostic codes, alcohol dependence, which is an what we would define as an alcoholic or with other substances as chemically dependent. A separate category was alcohol abuse, using it more than desired or in dangerous situations. With any drug, including alcohol, it's useful to know what the person looks like when they are under the influence, or in the case of alcohol, intoxicated. We also need to know what someone would look like when they were going through alcohol withdrawals. And it is possible for alcohol use to produce a permanent uh, difference, such as a brain disorder. That would be defined as an alcohol-induced disorder. The most recent revision of the Diagnostic and Statistical Manual, the DSM-5, set new criteria for alcohol use disorders. We found that alcohol use disorders exist more on a continuum and making hard cutoffs between someone who was an alcoholic and someone who only abused alcohol was virtually impossible. There are varying degrees and someone can be diagnosed with an alcohol use disorder which is mild, moderate, or severe. We continue to need a separate set of criteria for people who are under the influence, alcohol like intoxication, and you see different symptoms when people are withdrawing. There's still a list of problems which can be alcohol induced, which remain long after the person detoxes off of the alcohol. Included in this substance use and related area, pathological gambling is the only accepted behavioral disorder in the United States. In 2018, the World Health Organization added internet gaming disorder. A number of other behavioral addictions have been proposed, and the brain scans and the research seem to suggest that it is possible, as a result of doing a behavior a lot, to develop a, a change in the brain which leads to meeting criteria for an addiction. Having defined alcoholism as a chronic relapsing disorder, it's important to have a criteria for when the alcohol use disorder is in remission. 
three months with no symptoms other than craving is considered early remission. Sustained or stable remission is one year with no symptoms. What's ahead for the Counselor Soapbox video channel? More learning about alcohol videos, more drug education videos, and some mental health and wellness videos. If you've enjoyed this video, please click the like button directly below and subscribe to receive new videos as they are completed. For more information, please visit the CounselorSoapbox.com blog where you will find articles on mental health, substance abuse, and having a happy life. The David Joel Miller fiction and nonfiction books are available on Amazon.